So thank you for meeting with us. Yeah. That's glad awesome. To be here. Uh, I think we're calling this uh, segment uh, Channel 71 News with Rutgers of Waltham. Uh, and you are our first uh, first we're interviewing. So how are you feeling right now? You're one month into a very narrow win. You're one month away from being inaugurated. And you know, you won by 18 votes. So that's an amazing thing. So <laughs> describe that. What is that feeling like? Total excitement because this has been a goal of mine for a long time. And the other side of it is feeling overwhelmed because it's a big city. There's a lot of people and there's a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. And I have my priorities and I have to work with 14 other people to get things done. When I found out that I won, I still had nightmares that I didn't win. Oh my gosh. And uh, part of that was me not accepting that the, all the work that I did really paid off and allowing myself to say, hey, you actually like did something and feel that. One of the things that I've been thinking a lot about is how to be effective and mm -hmm. how to be communicative because mm -hmm. that was definitely part of my campaign was being transparent, letting people know what's going on. So one of the things that I'm thinking about is really building kind of a neighborhood network. People that can say, oh, this is happening in my neighborhood. We can work with sort of the ward counselors to to feel out what those those issues are. But I want to be able to have a, a finger on the pulse of mm -hmm. what's happening in all the different neighborhoods. You ever talk to Kathleen or George about that idea? Because they're used to, I don't know if you've ever heard the story, Years and years ago, like in the 80s or something, there used to be a neighborhood community group in like every neighborhood. Yes. Do you remember what that's called? People used to talk very highly of it. That was more powerful than the city council. It was just yes. neighborhoods being organized. I've always wanted to emulate it, but uh, it's just something that we've never gone through. So definitely, yeah, no, did you talk about that? Brain turning, we'd love, to, we'd love to make that happen. One good thing, looking back on the campaign trail, and one less good thing. <laughs> uh, so one good thing was and is that when I drive around Waltham, anywhere I am in Waltham, I'm like, oh yeah, I canvassed that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I talked to that person. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I I definitely walked this whole street and met mm -hmm. everybody on, on the street. And I remember things about, you know, the different people that I wow. talked to. And that is just so powerful because mm -hmm. I feel like now going into this job, I have this support system, you know, because a lot of people have said, oh, this is going to be a lonely job and you're going to feel alone a lot of the time. And, you know, I, I just I'm looking around the neighborhoods and thinking, how could I feel alone when mm -hmm. I've met and connected and truly connected with people? I think mm -hmm. that's the best thing that that came out of it. Uh, so you, if you, you want to, would you like to share about a less good thing that is happening on the campaign trail? Yeah, I mean, it, definitely the online negativity was really hard to tune out. But what kept being the contrast, even the anonymous letter and all those things, I would literally take all that energy and frustration of wanting to respond, and I would pack up my campaign materials, I had my clipboard, and I would just go out and start talking to people and knock out, you know, another list. And... Everybody on the doors, even the people who like, there were like two people that slammed the door. <laughs> and That's I don't even nice. know if they like thought I was like a, like I didn't take it personally. Um, even those couple of people didn't compare to the literally thousands of people that mm -hmm. I talked to and that my campaign team talked to. So that was the only hard part was you and, and that online world, like that's my job too. I'm a mm -hmm. social media marketer. Mm -hmm. So I have to be like, I don't have a choice. I have to be on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so to be on Facebook and not see that. And even my husband was texting me. He's like, I know you want to respond right now. He's like, I want to respond right now. But we uh, can't. I, I texted you too. I'm like, don't yes. respond. Don't and respond. I so appreciated that because I literally needed that yeah. reminder because the power of ego and uh, identity online yeah. is you just immediately want to be defensive yeah. and you can you absolutely cannot because no. it's not reality it is not no facebook's not real facebook's not a real place you know what's a real place the doors yes and you do that calling people on election day um i had some fascinating conversations 
where people were like, I always vote, I always vote, but this is a local election and I have no idea who I should vote for. Tell mm-hmm. me who I should vote for. Mm-hmm. And this is at like six o'clock at night yeah, yeah, on election. election night. And so I think part of what I want to do is be better about communicating how it all works. And mm-hmm. you have laid so much of the groundwork for that in terms of attending all of the meetings, helping people understand just the mechanics of it. Because Mm -hmm. if it's secretive or cryptic, then people are going to just say, well, I don't have time. I don't have time to understand it. But if we can make it digestible and accessible and clear to people, Mm -hmm. then they will want to maybe not run for office, (laughs) like go whole hog, but, you know, they'll... um, be able to dip their toes in and out and say, okay, I have the information I need to make an informed decision. I want to focus more on independent journalism and just getting more information out there because I thought I found the same thing was that people did not know what was going on in the city. No. And even people that cared about it, people had no idea what was going on. So that, that's literally what we're doing right now. That is, uh, <laughs> why we're here.